Folks, we'd like to uh, welcome you all to Kutztown University for the announcement of the 12th president, Dr. Kenneth Hawkinson. The vote uh, was, just took place over in the uh, president's boardroom by the uh, Board of Governors for the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. We have with us our new president, Dr. Kenneth Hawkinson, his wife, Anne-Marie Hayes Hawkinson, Jack Wabi, who is the chair of the Kutztown University Council of Trustees, Guido Pacchini is the chairman of the Board of Governors for the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. He's also a member of our Council of Trustees. The Chancellor of the State System, Mr. Frank Brogan, and at the end we have Joe Scaboria, who was our Student Government Board President. So at this uh, point, I will bring forward the 12th President of Kutztown University, Dr. Kenneth Hawkinson. Thanks so much. Thank you, Matt. Well, I, I just can't say how honored and humbled I am at the opportunity that's been pr provided to me by the uh, by the, the chancellor and the uh, chair of our board and by the, the, the chair of our council here at the at Kutztown University. I, I feel a lot of warmth in the room, and not only because of that beautiful fireplace uh, back there, but uh, when Anne-Marie and I visited this campus, uh, we really felt that it was a special place. And I'm going to talk a little bit about place when I give my remarks in a few minutes and, and elaborate on that a little bit more. But we're just delighted to be here and we're, again, just truly honored to, to, to be given this opportunity. And so I, I want to go ahead and uh, let you go ahead and ask any questions that you might have. Yes. Hi, I'm Viviana Vidal from Teens Newsbreak. Um, my question for you is, what is your stance on the credit per hour tuition here at Kutztown? A credit per hour tuition. You're going to have to forgive me because I I uh, have not been here long enough to know the details of uh, what the discussion is on that. I've heard a little bit about that uh, through the course of the interviews. Mm -hmm. We'll certainly look at that. I'll, I'll say at my university, uh, or my old university, Western Illinois University, uh, we went through a conversion of, um, of going from a set rate to a per credit hour some years ago, about 15 years ago. So I'm familiar with kind of the ins and outs of a transition like that. But I can't really speak to it right now because I just don't know enough about it yet. Okay. okay. I have a question. Yes. Hi, Jennifer Blows from Lehigh Valley Business. Um, I know you mentioned slightly what, what attracted you to the university. Um, if you could kind of, if you could just name like one thing that really stood out to you. Well, well I, I, actually, if it's all right, I might go through a, a few things that really stood out because uh, one thing that stood out is, is that uh, Kutztown is, is very similar to my current university in terms of size, in terms of where it's located in a small community. It was very important uh, for Anne Marie and I to be located uh, in a uh, more of a rural setting uh, with a large university. Uh, I would not have wanted to work at an urban institution or even a suburban institution because people tend to go home after work and you don't see them again. Uh, you truly have a sense of a, of a community when you're in, in an environment like this. And, and so we're looking forward to being very much a part of the local community culture and that the university serves as, as the cultural focal point for, for probably this whole region. In addition, when we l looked at the um, University. Anne Marie has a uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting and a Master of Arts in Art History and spent 24 years uh, working in museums or running art galleries. And when we saw the uh, art program here, which is truly one of the finest programs in the country, that was a major attraction the, the emphasis on the arts and especially the visual arts. And my background, if, if you may have seen uh, my curriculum vita, I have a strong background in folklore and oral tradition. And one of the things that caught my eye when I first looked at the uh, profile of, of this institution was that German cultural folklore festival you have each summer. And I thought, wow, that's the kind of place I want to be. So those are a few of the reasons why I, 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 uh, I was very interested in, in KU. Yes. Uh, where do you see KU in the next five years? Right. I see it growing, prosperous. Uh, it, it, it's an exciting time. You, you know, when you go into challenging times, uh, people often uh, feel as if they're pulled down. That uh, just this morning, early this morning, 
I was in a session at the American Council of Education uh, with Lamar Alexander, the senator from Tennessee, long-serving senator, former governor. And uh, he was a secretary of education, and he's now leading a bipartisan group of senators to reform the Higher Education Act. And so this period of where the old act is, 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 um, is over and then the new one is being created, some would think of all the challenges and difficulties that come with that. But I, I, he also talked about all, all the possibilities that come with that too and all the change that could be made. And, and I, I think KU is poised, as many institutions are across the country, that as we come out of the, the greatest recession we've had since the Great Depression, uh, that there'll be more investment in higher education. I know they're thinking of trying to put more money in the higher education at the federal level and, and uh, at the state level, and that's gonna provide many new opportunities to grow and to continue to serve the traditional population of, of, of our university, but to go beyond that and to seek out those, those students who may be more place-bound and who may be uh, working adults and adult learners, and I see us branching out and, and taking care of more of their needs as well. Yes. Oh, no, please. Um, what skills have you acquired over your experience at other institutions do you plan to bring at KU? Okay. Uh, well, I've had a, uh, a career that has, I think, prepared me well uh, to, to be a president of a university. Uh, I've had a lot of life experience uh, serving both as an Army officer and infantry officer in Germany, and I know the German uh, uh, culture and heritage in this, at this university, and also as a Peace Corps volunteer serving in West Africa. And that, those two experiences, uh, which seem very different, actually, they, they're very similar because in both experiences there's a common mission and you work together with other people and you, you live in other parts of the world and you speak other languages. And I think that prepared me well for when I uh, was finished with my doctorate degree. I uh, became a professor at Western Illinois University. And I, I just got very involved with all aspects of faculty governance. Uh, I served as the vice president and president of the faculty union. I also served as vice president or vice chair of the faculty senate for a number of years and, and many, many different consuls and committees uh, I was involved in. And, but then the, I reached a stage where the opportunity came to become a department chair. It was a very large department with three distinct areas in different buildings, different missions. It was almost like a college. And so I learned the basics of, of how a department works and a college works at that level. And then I moved on to be an associate dean and I learned more about developing curriculum and working with faculty from many different disciplines. And I went on to be the associate provost and, and was in charge of the budget. And, and uh, the human resource area for academic affairs and summer school and, and 10 or 15 other things and, and just gradually learned and learned. And then as provost of the university, I've, I've had a very large number of responsibilities. I have, currently I have 1,200 employees that report to me in five colleges and nine divisions. And, and so all these things have prepared me, I think, to be able to take on a presidency, both in terms of my life experience and who I am as a person and in terms of just basic raw training that I've gone through over the last, uh, well, 28 years at my past university. Or, yes. Um, Lisa Mitchell, Kutztown Patriot, a weekly newspaper yes. out here. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me how do you hope Kutztown University and the town itself can work together? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm very excited about the possibilities that are there before, before us uh, in, in town and university relations. Um, I, I, let me tell you a little bit about how it works in my town. Um, uh, I, I'm very active in many of the community events. Uh, in, in Macomb, Illinois, we also have a jazz, a jazz festival, uh, art festivals. Uh, many special events that occur. The mayor of the town is, is one of my best friends. One of his daughters is my goddaughter. I have a very good relationship with him and the other community leaders. We have a joint uh, community university committee that meets uh, once a month. It includes the police chief, the sheriff of the county, the university police chief, 
uh, the, the president and various other officials uh, that get together on a, on a monthly basis to talk about any concerns they may have and ways in which they can coordinate and work together. Uh, the president of Western Illinois University and myself and, and other vice presidents recently hosted some town hall meetings. We worked with the mayor and a head of our chamber of commerce and other community leaders uh, to talk about ways in which we can help each other in community development and bringing in new businesses and supporting the businesses that we currently have and in diversifying our businesses because as we diversify our, our student population, our faculty population, we need to also diversify the, the products and the businesses that we have in town to serve that, that new population. Uh, and uh, we have a certain university and community uh, committees uh, such as the Performing Arts Society wherein community members and university people work together. I served on that for six years and uh, th this committee uh, raises over $100,000 a year to bring in 8,000 children to experience the arts uh, on campus. But it's community people who are uh, very much a part of that process and we all work together. So it's these kinds of things that that we do uh, in Macomb and at Western Illinois University. I'm sure you do some great things here as well, but if any of these things that, that I just talked about can be applied here, then I, I would certainly uh, talk to people about trying to have them uh, start up uh, in this community at this university as well. Yes? I'm 69 News. Do you feel like the university is lacking anything that you would like to see brought here in the future? I, I think the university is perfect. <laughs> in uh, every way. Uh, I haven't been here long enough to know uh, fully what things might be lacking. Um, I'm going to be spending the first six months learning about things like that. I'm going to be meeting with every constituency group uh, I, I can on campus and I want to set up advisory groups with faculty and staff and work with the faculty governance groups, faculty uh, senate, uh, with the union leadership and try to identify those things that might it not be what I had said when I started this answer, that might not be perfect. And I want to build on the foundation that, that the very strong leadership uh, of this campus has, has built in the past. And uh, it's not lost on me that next year will be the 150th anniversary of this institution and, and the, the long history and, and the, the great work of the faculty and the staff and, and the current administration, I, I, I think I, I will uh, I, I very much appreciate all the groundwork that they've laid, and then we'll just see what we can what we can do beyond it, uh, beyond everything that they've done, and, and if things uh, need to be um, worked on and challenges have to be met, I'm sure we'll identify those those challenges in the next few months. Yes. 